I'm Miss Biz, and you're about to learn all about enchanting in Elder Scrolls Online. This guide is going to be pretty in-depth, detailed, and lengthy, so if you kind of already know what's going on, you probably actually want to check out my much quicker and basic guide, my quick and basic enchanting guide. So, put up a little link for you right now if you want to check that one out. Alright, so you decided that you really don't know anything about enchanting in ESO and you want to learn everything there is? Awesome! Well, let's carry on. So, first off, big question, what is enchanting in this game? What do you use it for and what's it create? Well, enchanting in ESO is actually how you create glyphs to apply to your armor, weapons, and jewelry. Here you can see I've got some glyphs. This is an armor glyph. I've got a weapon glyph here. And here is a jewelry glyph. You can actually see what enchants I have on my pieces when you look over my inventory. So on my shoulder here, you can see that I have a stamina enchantment on it. On my staff here, I have an absorb magicka enchantment. You actually use glyphs and apply them to your weapons, jewelry, and armor, and that's how you enchant something. Enchanting craft is how you actually craft those glyphs. Now that you know what enchanting does and what it is in ESO, I'm going to go over the skill line. The very first skill in your skill tree is Aspect Improvement. Tier 1 of this skill will be automatically unlocked, so you will be able to craft white glyphs using Ta, as well you'll be able to craft using green or fine glyphs using Jijota. To craft glyphs that use the better quality runes, such as Denada, Rakuda, and Kuda, you're going to have to put more skill points into this passive. So your second skill point, you'll be able to use Denada. I put another skill point, you'll be able to use Rakuda. And if you put another skill point to get 4 out of 4, you will be able to use Kuda runes, which make a legendary or a gold glyph. The next skill is Potency Improvement. This passive determines what level of potency runes you can use and therefore determines what levels of glyphs you can actually craft. The first tier of this will of course already be unlocked so no need to spend your very first skill point there and you'll be able to craft level 1 to 15 glyphs. This skill also determines what potency runes you're going to find when you're out harvesting. Uh, we'll cover harvesting right away. Half the potency runes will match your character level, and the other half that you find out in the wild will match this level, your potency improvement, or the highest level of glyph or potency that you can actually use in the enchanting skill line. Next up, we have Kenai. This passive helps you spot runes in the wild easier. Although runes already do glow red, this passive adds a bit of smoke and sparkle to the resource node. Your first point will allow you to see the effects of this passive from 20 meters or closer. The second point will cause you to see it 30 meters or closer. And the third and final skill point you put in will allow you to see these special effects 40 meters or closer. This is handy to have, but definitely not needed while you're leveling, as weapon and armor skills are probably more important to you at the time. Like I said, runes already do have a glowing effect. Here you can see a rune that does not have the Kenai passive. But if you have extra skill points to spend, Kenai does make them a little bit easier to see. And here's a rune where you can see I'm using the Kenai passive. Hireling. So this fourth skill in your enchanting skill line is what will hire a hireling to bring you enchanting runes every day. The first point means that the hireling will send you one mail per day. The second point, they will still only bring you one mail per day, but you will get better quality or higher quality items. If you place the third skill point in, it will cause the hireling to send you items twice per day. But hirelings are on a 12 hour timer, and that timer does not start until you pick up your last mail from them. So the twice per day delivery isn't best for everyone. Once you log in and grab your hireling mail, 12 after hours after that, you'll receive another one when you log on. Or if you only have one or two skill points in, 24 hours after you grab your mail, you will receive your next mail. So if you're going to put all three skill points in, make sure you can actually log on every 12 hours. 
Our final skill in the enchanting skill tree is runestone extraction. This will help you get more runes when you deconstruct glyphs. The first point increases your chances of receiving runes from deconstructing a glyph by 3%. The second point increases your chances by 6%. And if you have all three skill points in here, it increases your chances of getting runes back when deconstructing glyphs by 9%. So to get going on the enchanting craft in ESO, what exactly is it that you need? Well, you're going to need rune stones. To craft a glyph, you'll actually need three different runes. These can be found by harvesting resource nodes, purchasing them from other players, or only for potency runes, purchasing them from an enchanter NPC. The three runes you will need are Aspect Runes, Potency Runes, and Essence Runes. So if you're like me and you like to actually find all your materials for crafting, you'll want to know what you're looking for when you're harvesting rune stones. So right here, this is a rune stone. And as you can see, I do have the Kenai ability on. So all rune stones are red, and they got this awesome little gem in the middle. And when you go to collect them, you will find that you will always get an aspect rune, you will always get an essence rune, and you have a 33% chance to also receive a potency rune. The potency rune will match either your character level or your crafting level. You know, like your crafting level is the highest level of glyph that you are able to create on that character. Here you can see I picked up something that I can't craft with it, so obviously it matches my character level. So now that you know what you need and how you're going to get these different rune stones, I'll go a little bit more into detail on what each type of rune stone does and why you need them. So the first one we'll cover is Aspect Runes. When harvesting a rune stone, you will always receive an Aspect Rune. Once harvested and in your inventory, these will be a circle shape like you're seeing here. Aspect Runes are what determines the quality or color of your glyph. The lowest quality glyph is created using Ta. The next best would be a green or fine glyph using Jojota. Then we have the blue Donata, the purple Rakuda, and finally a legendary gold glyph is made using Kuda. Potency runes have a 33% chance of being harvested from a rune stone. You can also purchase rune stones, as you can see I'm doing here, from an NPC enchanting vendor. Once harvested or purchased, the icon will be square. Potency runes determine the level range of the glyph. For each level range, there are two potency runes. One is considered additive and the other is considered subtractive. The level of the glyph needs to match the level of the item you are applying it to, not your character level. You are able to apply lower level glyphs to higher level items, but keep in mind it will not be as strong as a glyph for that actual item level. The last type of rune you will need is an essence rune. These will also be harvested every time you harvest a rune stone resource node. They are recognized in your inventory by the triangle shape, and they will determine the stat or the element of the glyph. So as you can see here, this one does magicka, this one does shock, and like I said, it might use it in different ways depending on if your potency rune is additive or subtractive, but we'll cover that a little later in this guide. So if you went out harvesting and you got all the different types of runes you need, or maybe you bought them from other players, well, we need to get to crafting then. The very first thing you're going to have to do is find an enchanting station, and it looks just like this. You can also find it on your map by this icon. Once you find an enchanting station and you open it up, you'll notice that your character won't know anything about all the different runes. You'll need to experiment, or Google, to find out what level each potency rune will make and what stat or element a specific essence rune represents. Fortunately, the aspect runes are pretty easy to figure out because they follow your normal item quality pattern. Here you'll notice that I don't know what Jajora is, I don't know what Kaderi is, and I have used Ta before. 
So what you'll need to do is add one of each rune type to the interface here. So make sure you select one potency, one essence, and one aspect rune. You'll notice that I do not know what a couple of these different runes do, but I'm going to go ahead and try to craft a glyph. Jejora Kaderita. Fortunately, once you craft a glyph, you'll learn those things about each rune and it will show you what you learned and what you know. There's also no way to fail making a glyph. Every possible combination of runes will craft a glyph. After creating a glyph, if you put those same three runes back, it's actually going to show you what glyph will be created. So now I'm going to get into the potency runes and what exactly subtractive and additive means. So potency runes change what a glyph actually does in a sense. I can use the same aspect and same essence runes in a glyph and using an additive potency rune, it will yield a glyph that adds max health and changing only the potency rune out for a subtractive one will change it to absorbing health so it's stealing health there are two potency runes to every glyph level range so one for additive one for subtractive all levels of potency runes will create the same glyph as long as you remember just to use the additive or subtractive one again so here I'm showing you a very low level glyph and changing out the rune stone for a matching one that is also additive shows the exact same glyph, it's just for a higher level range. To craft an armor glyph, you will always need an additive rune. Weapon and jewelry glyphs can be created using either subtractive or additive runes. So once you have actually crafted a glyph, you can apply to any item at the appropriate level either in your inventory or something you're wearing, just by right-clicking. So here we're going to look at this restoration staff, right-click and select enchant. Here it pops up all the different glyphs that I have that can be applied to this staff. I would just need to select the glyph I want to use and enchant my staff. Here we can see what my staff will look like before. This is what it currently looks like. And this is now what it looks like after it will be enchanted. I'm going to cancel this because I don't want to put this glyph on there, but that's how you enchant items. It's also worth noting, this is actually a level 1 glyph, and this is a champion rank 40 staff, and I can still apply it, but it's not really going to help me a whole bunch. You'll want to really pay attention when you're enchanting all your armor. Armor has small and large slots, but it's not very obvious. Right now, I'm trying to enchant my gloves. If I select this average glyph of stamina, it should give me 196 maximum stamina. If I look at what will actually be added to my gloves once I enchant this item, you'll see that it's only 79 maximum stamina. But if I go over here and try to enchant my hood with that exact same glyph, I'm going to get the full amount of stamina. The only reason you're seeing a little bit more here is because I have the infused trait, which makes my enchant a little bit stronger. So any enchants that go on your helmet, chest, legs, or shield will be a large enchant, and they'll actually match what is on the tooltip of the glyph. Anything that goes on your shoulders, gloves, belt, or boots, you're only actually going to get a portion of what the tooltip value of that glyph is. You also notice that, let's say you enchant your weapon, you'll notice that this blue bar shows up like you're seeing on my screen now. Well, after you've used your enchanted weapon for a while, you'll notice that bar goes down. You'll need to recharge your enchantment using soul gems. Jewelry and armor enchantments do not need to be recharged. So I'm just going to right click on my weapon, click charge, select a soul gem, and you will see it's going to fully charge up my weapon. Your enchantment will work just as good when your bar is half full as when it's full. The difference is when that bar completely empties, your enchantment just will not work anymore. It will not proc. So be sure to always check your weapon enchantments and make sure they're charged. With enchanting in ESO, there's actually also a bunch of different achievements you can get. 
A few of them actually also open up a new die color choice for you. So here's a quick look at all the different achievements that you can get with the enchanting craft in Elder Scrolls Online. Keep in mind that while you're enchanting, you're probably also going to be working on a couple of the different general crafting items because when you're out harvesting materials, that's actually just a general crafting achievement and not specific to enchanting. You'll notice there was another option when you were at your enchanting table. We were first under the creation screen, but there's also an extraction screen. This is actually for deconstructing glyphs, and it's a really good source of inspiration, which is your crafting experience. Especially because enchanting is normally the craft that takes the longest to level. You do have a chance to get runes back from deconstruction, and you can invest skill points into a passive in the skill tree that will give you a better chance of getting runes back. So thanks for tuning in. This was my enchanting guide. I'm Miss Biz, and if you have any questions, please leave a comment and I'll answer as soon as I can. If this video helped you out, be sure to like and subscribe if you want to see other video guides I create. Bye for now!